mission statement is, is that we are a company committed to acquiring and advancing artificial intelligence, machine learning technologies that addresses urgent societal needs. And that, that's our focus, um, is, is finding the, the technologies that aren't, you know, cute and fun or the next, uh, you know, blackjack game that uh, the, the computer that can beat the human, um, but finding the, the technologies out there that rely on artificial intelligence and that address, you know, urgent needs in today's society. It, it's interesting. You're at the intersection of two mega trends, the health yeah. tech space and artificial intelligence. And the con convergence of those is, yeah. is the intersection is, I think, I think the space you're in is, this is a multi-billion dollar space. Well, let's talk yeah. about the first unicorn and that is health gauge. Now I have, I, I got the, the health gauge, by the way, I charged this. And the battery actually it goes for quite a while. I mean, just because I charged mm -hmm. about a month yeah. ago. I mean, it's amazing. Wow. So the first company is Health Gauge. Tim, explain yeah. to us uh, the thesis. In other words, why did you invest in the Health Gauge? Now you own a hundred percent. AI Mel owns a hundred percent of Health Gauge. What does this yeah. this business do? Okay, so Health Gauge is in the you know the uh, uh, the wearable health tech space, um, and specifically. Um, it, it's as you were displaying, as I'm wearing mine here now with my uh, my fancy new orange band. Um, what this is is th this is our uh, proprietary um, uh, uh, smartwatch, um, uh, and and the purpose of this is to aggregate um, the the, the uh, biometric signals coming off your body, such as your heart rate, your heart rate variability, uh, your blood pressure. Uh, it'll do ECG measurements, uh, oxygen, blood oxygen uh, uh, content, uh, body temperature, uh, and and more. Um, so it's 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 aggregating all this data from your body, um, 24 hours a day, and it's putting it through our proprietary artificial intelligence. And this is this is the key to this. Um, there's a lot of wearables out on the market. Half the people watching today will hold up their Apple Watch or their Fitbit or their Samsung or whatever it is and say, yeah, mine's better than yours. Um, but here's the problem, not problem, but here's the, the shortcoming with all of those. Um, the, the, the hardware in these wearables will only um, take you so far in terms of accuracy as a, a, a wearable medical device. Um, and that degree of accuracy is is good enough to give you some general understanding of what's going on in your body but it's not uh, accurate to what is considered um, a, 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 a medical device um, what we are in the process of doing right now and we're the only company in this process um, uh, we are uh, taking that raw data that's coming off this and we're filtering it through our artificial intelligence and through our app on your smartphone. And uh, the results that come out are uh, significantly more accurate. And when I say significantly more accurate, I'm talking 15, 20% more accurate. So in other words, it takes a blood pressure measurement from the wearable from being a, a, a good general indicator of what your blood pressure is um, once we filter that through our artificial intelligence, which was developed by our team in-house, it's patented, it's proprietary, nobody else has this. Once we filter it through our artificial intelligence, it brings that degree of accuracy in the range that allows for approval by the FDA as a class two medical device. So it takes it from being a glorified toy, and I'm sorry, but that's that's the the... The, the, the quality of, of, of medical data that you're getting off an Apple Watch or a Fitbit or a Samsung and so on, you're getting something that, that's a step above a, a gimmick or a toy. Uh, 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 we're taking that to the next level, which is applying our artificial intelligence and coming out the other end with uh, uh, measurements that meet the FDA's requirement as a medical device, meaning as accurate as the blood pressure cuff that your doctor is putting on you in a hospital, that accurate. Um, so that's the significance of our artificial intelligence and the difference it makes 
on um, uh, how good our technology is. So our solution, just to, to step back, is a three-part solution. This aggregates uh, some of the, the, the uh, biomedical uh, information from your body. That is then filtered through an app on your phone, our proprietary app, uh, which uh, gives you now uh, at or near medical grade data. Um, and the third part of that is our cloud platform, again, proprietary, that takes all this data that's being aggregated from you wearing your, your wearable, um, and it puts it on that platform and stores it forever that you have access to. Your doctor, your pharmacist, your therapist, your family members, whoever you want has access to that data. And, and that, is, that sets us apart from anybody else out in the marketplace today. I want to give a plug. You know, I, I wrote this book, 10 Bagger Blueprint. It's all about, you know, the system for finding stocks that have a you know, 10x upside. You know, I've had a whole bunch of them. And they all have certain things in common. You probably know, you know, you've seen enough of these. They all have certain comp things in common. And But one of the things I look for is getting in. You got to get into these stocks. Uh, mm -hmm. The price is everything. You know, the, you got to get in at the right price. Uh, because right. everything is risky. Any, it could go to zero, right? AML, in theory, could go to zero, right? Possibly. Absolutely. You know, sure, sure. Uh, but when a stock is five million valuation at a nickel, it's really been de-risked, and especially when you yeah. see the upside. So it's an asymmetric bet. This is what I want to yeah. emphasize. The way I'm looking at this is, it's an asymmetric bet. You only, you don't need to get everything right. You just need to be right a little bit for yeah. it to have a massive effect. Because again, you're getting this because the AI sector, we're seeing stocks get crazy valuations now, right? It's a hyped up area. There's, no question. I've, I see other companies. I don't want to mention any names that are don't, are not much more advanced than, a, than AIML. I mean, really, they don't have that much more, and they're trading at you know uh, seventy five, eighty million dollar valuations. And this is the micro cap sector. We're not even talking about you know the big guys, right? We're talking about the micro cap right. sector, right? Companies that you know are losing you know twenty million a year. People, I'm not going to mention the names, but you know people know yeah. which ones I'm talking about. And, yeah. and here we have, so you're trading at you know a fraction, you know. Ten, you yeah. know, five literally almost like five cents on the dollar. So I see yeah. that, you know, I see that as a major, major, um, uh, you know, as that's that's one of the key investment highlights for me is is the sure. valuation, multiple shots on the goal. You got this asymmetric setup where you know you're paying five million for this, and if any one of these things work out, it, it could be a moonshot. It could be, you know, I mean. Yeah. A billion dollar. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could, you know, the health gauge business that you have, which we're going to talk about in a second, how big that opportunity is. Um, yeah. So any one of those things could be a unicorn. I mean, you have yeah. basically a unicorn farm. You have. Yeah. Is it fair to say that essentially that that AIML is an AI unicorn farm? You're developing these potential. I, I, I'd like to. I'd like to think of it that way. That's for sure. Um, um, can I add a few other things, Jack? First of all, yeah. um, I. I um, I, I've had the pleasure of reading Ted Ten Bagger, your book, and found it very uh, informative, even for someone like myself who's been in the, the markets for, for decades. Um, there were, uh, you know, several points in there that, uh, um, that that I found very helpful and very useful. Um, you made a, a remark earlier uh, regarding that we've been de-risked because of our market cap, and that's very true. Um, but that's only one aspect of it. We've also been de-risked because of how far our technology and, and business cycle has advanced in the last two years since we've started this project, um, since, you know, since we took on HealthGage as, a, as the first company uh, in, in our portfolio. Um, uh, HealthGage itself, the, the, the technology has gone from um, what we would call an MVP, which is a, a minimum viable product, so it's it's working, but it's kind of a a, a 1.0 um, or, or let, you know to put it in a, a terminology that uh, you know viewers might be able to relate to better. Um, you know the the it, it went from a Model T from day one to now it's a, a Cadillac. Um, so we, that that's how the product has uh, progressed over the last couple of years. The the bugs have been worked out of. 
uh, the hardware and out of the AI software. We've completed our patent work on uh, on our technology, and so and and we've developed our uh, our our business development cycle, you know, tremendously. So so it, it's been de-risked not only because our market cap is 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 tiny, like you've mentioned, but also because now we're ready to break out now yeah. the you know the hard expansive slow risky work of developing the technology developing uh, a, a niche in the market um are, is behind us and now it's you know uh, uh, full full on on the uh, business development so that story and i believe we're at that inflection point as you said where where that hard uh, expansive risky slow work is behind us now and uh, and I believe that uh, um, we're ready for that, you know, overnight success story now. <laughs> yeah, and, and here's the thing: I, I think you know we're gonna, we're going to dive into the fundamentals. I just want to add one thing: is you know, again, one of the things that I look for with you know our next super stocks is, you know, I, I'm literally looking for stocks which I believe could become ten baggers. What I'm looking for is the companies that are getting into what I call the ten bagger window. So there's a kind of a window of opportunity. And again, I talk about that, you know, in the book Ten Bagger blueprint i'll give it another plug it's on amazon number one bestseller and uh, the point is this uh you you mentioned something that exactly what happens you know the companies they're working and working a lot of times these stocks get beaten down to zero everybody gives up and then all of a sudden they're right at that inflection point and we had a couple of examples like that we had um a company called cbdt went from a nickel where you are to two dollars and fifty cents in six months i mean it was a bit of a crazy market but you know it, it, it was a 50 bagger Peak fintech, very similar. Yeah. They were doing things for you, and they pivoted. They had multiple business models that pivoted a couple of times. That became a twenty bagger. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. very. I, I think the, the setup is there. Now let's talk about the fundamentals. Now, and we have the only patent on this. Also, so, by the way, so there's a couple really of good. okay. So there's a couple of interesting things. We're talking about the patent in a bit because yeah. one of the things we talked about in the last interview, and I'm, I, I kind of made that the focus, where, but it's really not the focus of the business. But you know, you have a patent that covers essentially. A very broad patent that covers yes. you know that any type of health monitoring in yeah. this entire 20 billion dollar wearables market the wearables market those wearable devices you know it's a 20 billion dollar market you look at whoop a fitbit oh, there's a whole bunch of them there's i mean thousands right not thousands this is whatever a couple hundred different devices sure. but anybody yeah. can you explain anybody i think from what i understand is anybody who's using it for to monitor like different health things is mm -hmm. actually violating the your patent they're infringing on your patent it's true um so from you. we we have some very good patent attorneys and uh um what they did at the outset and i've been through this process before with other companies that uh that i've funded um in other areas uh, biomedical for example and um what the patent attorneys will do at the outset is ask the patent office for you know the the moon and the stars and everything in between in other words They'll they'll try to claim patent rights on everything. Literally, the moon of the stars, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and the patent office will throw Come out ninety five percent of of the claims that that have been made, and you might end up with you know one out of out of uh, out of a hundred claims that you made, and uh, and you're happy with that. Um, in our case, uh, when the patent office came back, um, we were granted. Uh, something like 65 of our claims, which covers the gambit. So in other words, the use of a wearable, it, it, it can be a wrist wearable in watch format. It can be in other formats like pendants or sewn into uh, uh, your clothing, or there, there's a lot of other wearables that are coming out into the market. We've got the patent on that. Um, if you're using this wearable device to aggregate uh, data coming off your your body um, uh, and, and the, the measurements uh, looking at things like uh, pulse and blood pressure and ECGs and blood oxygen and blood glucose um, and several other things. If your watch does that, that company is infringing on our patent. Um, the, the, the patent office granted us um, uh, the, the patent covering all those things, including, but not exclusively the use of artificial intelligence to help refine the results coming off that. So whether the wearable is using artificial intelligence, nobody out there is doing it except us, um, uh, or not, 
um, we've got the patent on it. So basically, you know, the, 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 the bottom line is as a, as a, a, a general blanket statement, um, any company out there that has a wearable that's taking your, your pulse or your, your uh, uh, respiratory rate or your blood pressure or blood glucose or whatever else they, they, they want to be doing with it, we've got the patent on that. Um, and, and, we'll, and, and Tim, what this means essentially is at some point, these companies, because they're infringing on the patent, and again, this $20 billion market, they're going to either, your your patent attorneys are going to have to you know sue them. There's going to be some sort of settlement. There's going to be royalties paid. But really, the royalties generally are what? It's roughly 2% of gross sales usually is what royalties are. One person, it's somewhere in that range. Right. right. Of course, every contract is on a negotiated basis. But I'll give you an example. There was a company out of California by the name of MedWatch which is developing a similar wearable device to ours, but specifically for the blood glucose market which, or diabetes market. Which oh, is and they came, this, this is the company that came to you voluntarily, right? So, this, yeah. I, so I think this validates the whole the whole idea that, that what you have is is a serious patent because these guys came to you out of the blue. They say, you know, you'll tell us right. something. But I think, so this is not, so I believe this patent position by itself could make the stock a 10 bagger in my opinion. So there's multiple Certainly. catalysts for this to be a 10 bagger. The patent position, if this, yeah. this could potentially bring in 10, 20 million a year in, in, in a royalty income. I mean, it'll, it might take a year or two years to, to get to all that stuff, whatever, but it's it, it's built in, into the stock right now. But Tim, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Tell us what happened. No, that's, that's fine because it, no, and, and, and you're right. And it's an exciting story and it does validate um, what we're what we're stating. Um, so MedWatch developing, you know, blood glucose monitor wearable, which is a huge, huge uh, $100 billion a year market in the U.S. alone. And they went to patent it. And of course, what they found out is that, oh, there's this Canadian company by the name of HealthGage, which already has the patent on it. So they, they did the right thing. They came to us and said, we're developing this technology. We'd like to uh, number one, license uh, the technology from you because you have the patent. And number two, work with your tech team uh, because you're obviously ahead of us with respect to the uh, the, the application of artificial intelligence um, to this sort of, 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 uh, of usage. And uh, and so uh, an agreement was put in place. And, and so the agreement um, simply is they're paying us today and have been since this came in place last fall sometime. Uh, they're paying us uh, uh, 10,000 US per month for the life of the patent, so for the next 25 years, um, plus 2% royalty on their direct sales, plus 10% royalty on sales of products that they're um, uh, uh, developing for third-party companies such as Apple Watch and so on, uh, plus you know a couple million dollar break fee, plus their... their um, uh, relying on some of our artificial intelligence work. So they're paying us on a cost plus basis to help uh, do some of the artificial intelligence development work on their behalf and so on. So um, at no cost, no risk to us, um, we stand to gain a, a tremendous amount of money uh, from, uh, from this, this watch. This is, just one, this is just one tiny company. I mean, so there's one potential. company. Okay, so Tim, so really uh, what's extremely significant here is a couple of days ago, you announced that you're getting very close to getting FDA, the class two approval for, for the health gauge as a medical device. Can you explain exactly what this means, what the significance of this means, what kind of market opportunities this opens up for the company? Yeah, you, you bet. This was huge news for us, even though it was a short news release. Um, it was uh, certainly our most important news release to date. Um, so a class two medical device approval means uh, that the FDA recognizes it as a medical grade product uh, that, that can be used um, as a, a, a doctor would use, you know, uh, the, the, the instruments that he's using in a hospital. No other wearable device out there uh, today has approval as a class two medical device for blood pressure. Um, Okay, so Tim, so how big, so once you get the FDA approval, you know, as, as a class two medical device for health gauge, um, yeah. how big is the opportunity? What can, what, what will that, what could that translate in terms of revenues for, for the company? 
Well, we know that uh, you know the market for uh, measurement of blood pressure is, uh, uh, annually in the U.S. alone is in the billions of dollars. So it's a huge, huge market opportunity. We know from conversations that we've got ongoing with uh, several potential um, uh, uh, distributors uh, for us in the U.S. who are waiting for our FDA approval um, that they're ready to commit. Um, to thousands of units per month um, as a starting point. Um, and so what uh, this testing program did at the University of Alberta was uh, 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 validate um, using the, 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 the same protocol, the same uh, procedures that you follow in the full FDA study. Um, you follow a, a smaller group of, of people and, uh, and test your product in a, in a dry run setting. And what we found is that um, uh, our product today, this, this product right here, um, has the same degree of accuracy as the blood pressure cuff that your doctor would use in a hospital. Um, uh, it's at that degree of accuracy. Um, and, uh, and so this study was really, really important for us um, uh, uh, because it was at that that proof of concept. Now, the next step, final step, is we repeat this study uh, with a slightly larger uh, group of, of volunteers um, and submit those results uh, to the FDA for uh, the final approval as a, as a wearable uh, um, class to blood pressure monitor. Um, why is that important to us from the business standpoint? And therefore, ultimately, uh, as a stock investor, why should it be important to your, your viewers out there? Um, we've been in the business development stage for over the last year now with several substantial US-based um, uh, companies. Uh, some of them are uh, like large pharmacy uh, chains. Uh, some of them are insurance companies. Some of them are Fortune 500 companies um, who are all waiting for us to receive our final FDA approval uh, as a class to medical device for blood pressure. Um, and we then have, have, have uh, um, moved the, the, the ball over the, 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 the goal line, uh, so to speak. And, and we can now start formalizing uh, contracts with, uh, with some of these companies out there. And, so it's commercialization. Uh, we can start sales. Commercialization. Okay. You bet. And okay. Explain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as as a class two device now, so it's going to be in these pharmacies. How big is the market opportunity? So there's a couple of different opportunities right. actually for healthcare, but let's just talk about that one first. Right. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, the market opportunity is certainly in the billions of dollars. Um, that when you talk about um, the you know the number of 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 dollars that are spent across America um, by the public um, to, you know, to, to, to either buy or, uh, you know, go to the, the, the pharmacy and buy their own uh, blood pressure cuff uh, or go to their doctor to have their blood pressure measured. Um, you, you are talking an industry that, that is in the billions of dollars. Um, we have the ability to replicate that um, in this device here uh, for a fraction of the price. Instead of a blood pressure cuff that sits on your closet shelf and the batteries died six months ago and, uh, and you just never used again, uh, you're using uh, 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 the blood pressure device all day long, every day, as often as you want, once a minute, if you want. Um, and, it's and, there's giving, all, and, there's, and also there's other measurements that it can give you. There's a lot of other oh, stuff. Absolutely. It's very useful. Absolutely. I, yeah. now, okay, yeah. so this is the consumer application, which, you know, could yeah. be, you know, you know, look, you're being very <clears throat> modest. I mean, you're being, I think, very conservative. You're not saying, hey, this is going to be, you know, a billion dollars. Yeah. I mean, if, you're actually being quite conservative. Yeah. Uh, so I would say, I would say, you know, it's obviously a multi-million dollar opportunity in the first year. Uh, but I believe from the investor standpoint, once you get commercialization, the first revenues come in. I think that's gonna have a could have a, a massive impact on the stock because then people can extrapolate what else you could do. But all of a sudden, you have a whole different business. The, yeah. the value is no longer five million today. You're valued five million at a nickel. I mean, you you only need to get a few things right, I believe, to get yeah. this to a 25, 50 million valuation. By the way, which is which is nothing. I mean, we're talking yeah. like it's it's not even a big deal. I mean, the company was there before. Um, okay, yeah. so. Um, what about the other applications? I think you you have some B two B application. There were some 
enterprise type applications? Are you still? Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, for sure. There, there's again, there's, there's several of them that have been in you know the uh, business development cycle for the last several months or, or year now even. Um, and and again, each one of those as a potential revenue stream in and of themselves are, are huge, huge market opportunities. Um, you know, one that that's been in the development for a while um, is the, uh, the 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 home monitoring market uh, for for seniors, and we are in dialogue with um, a couple of the largest home care uh, uh, nursing um, companies uh, in North America, uh, who are always looking to you know to supplement their their offerings oh, yeah. you know, to their. Their, their customer base, and they see our wearable as 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 um, you know fitting very very neatly into that market because you know there's a lot of seniors that for example they need a, a nurse coming <clears throat> let's say once a week to make sure that um, they're on their meds and to just check their vitals and so on and that's probably enough they don't need you know. Uh, daily or or around the clock care, and so just the 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 occasional drop by by uh, by a nurse is is more than enough. Um, but what happens in the interim? What happens, you know, in the other you know six and a half days of the week when when the nurse isn't there? Um, uh, a product like ours fits that niche very very well, um, where we're giving that uh, remote patient monitoring you know feedback. Um, to uh, uh, to the medical staff, uh, to the family members, and so on. And uh, the, the healthcare companies understand that it's not only about um, making people live longer, but a high, higher quality of life, and at the same time reducing costs to the medical system by keeping people in their own homes as long as, as possible. And, and so a wearable like ours is, uh, uh, is, is a great tool for helping to achieve those goals. So, yeah. so this market, the remote patient monitoring market, which you're going to get into, it's a huge yeah. market opportunity. We've had companies uh, that we feature on the program, which the stocks did very well, um, you know, hundred, multi hundred million dollar valuations uh, doing exactly that. Right. Um, Absolutely. So this um, and how would that how would that business model work and when can you start? Because I, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a really disruptive thing. And also yeah. one of the thing which is very important that you have which we talked about before we started this interview yeah. off the air is so basically the whole idea is you're an AI company at the core you, you, the specialty is AI, right? You're getting yeah. this data coming in from all these pages. So you're aggregating this big data. You have the machine learning aspects because again, the name of the company is artificial intelligence, machine learning, AI ML. And exactly. so you're, aggr you're, you're taking all this, these massive data sets from, you know, thousands and thousands of patients. Now all of a sudden your AI, and the ML, it could essentially, because it's learning constantly, it's get, getting all this data, it could send a signal to the doctor if it detects a certain pattern that sure. could essentially something that could lead up to an emergency, whatever. But the idea yeah. is your device, if it keeps people out, this is what I learned from the other company, because that, that was a game changer for them, is if the device keeps people out of the emergency room, right, that's yeah. worth uh, 500 grand a year for the insurance companies because yeah. anytime somebody ends up, uh, you know, uh, one of these chronically ill people, uh, in uh, it, it, it's you know, it's extremely expensive. And if they yeah. could pay you, you know, 50 bucks a month or whatever it is for the remote patient, it, it could alert the doctor. That's the whole thing. The AI, if it could alert the doctor, hey, this guy, you know, this got diabetes and. You know, we're getting this data coming in that his heart. I, I'm not a doctor. I don't whatever. What? But there's an algorithm that you have which tells you, okay, yeah. these are the signs that you know sends an alert. Boom. Right. So. There